Thomas Edison, Richard Branson, John F. Kennedy, Mozart, Michael Jordan, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of vocations. Why is it that we rarely hear that they have or had ADHD? And you know what we hear even less about? Serena Williams, Emma Watson, Mel Robbins, Whoopi Goldberg, Agatha Christie, Aaron Brockovich, Cher. Yeah, the successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, now a coach. I'm also the creator of Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, a system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your strengths, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest gifts. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you, too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, hello, hello. I am Tracy Otsuka, and I want to welcome you to episode number 144 of ADHD for Smartass Women. Where does time go? I have no idea. Anyway, I hope you're well, and before we start... Just a little reminder or a little announcement, I should say. I am going to be opening my Your ADHD Brain is A-OK six-week live coaching program next week, and then we are starting the actual program the week after on October 19th. I think that's a Tuesday. So you know that we have these interest-driven brains, right? We're interested in so much. So the question is always, which of our many interests is the one that we should actually pursue? If you've been trying to answer that, what do I do with my life question, I know that I can help. And so you can get more information at tracyoutsuka.com forward slash AOK. You know, this will definitely be the last time I'm running AOK this year. And I'm honestly not sure at this point if I'll be offering the live version again next year. It is so much work. I love it, but it's so much work. And I've got a bunch of things going on, so I haven't really decided what I'm going to do next year. So I hope to see you this fall. I guess we're in fall this October. Anyway. Okay. So I just love our listeners. (laughs) You people are truly the best. I just got an email from a Mikey who had listened to episode 88 of the podcast. And that episode is called Rumination and Criticism. And in that episode, I talk about how five good things or even a hundred good things can happen to us. And then one not so good thing happens. And guess what we hyperfocus or ruminate on? Yeah, you know, the sucky thing, right? So the story that I tell in this podcast is about how I accidentally happen upon Reddit one Sunday morning and I discover that I am the subject of a conversation. Now, those who are having the conversation were just so kind, so complimentary, but then I keep reading. Stupid, right? And of course, someone, if I remember correctly, it was more than one person, I think it was two or three, start saying some things that aren't so nice. And I can't remember what they are at this point, but of course, I don't fixate on all of the kind, lovely complimentary comments. No, I go to the harsh comments and it literally ruins my Sunday morning. And so since then, I have not gone back to Reddit. I will not read any comments on Reddit. As far as I'm concerned, what people say about me is none of my business, right? So, you know, one of our admins in our big Facebook group, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, she, Joanna, lo- the lovely Joanna, she has been trying to get me to move the group over, the big Facebook group over to Reddit. But because of that one experience, like I can't even go there. To this day, as I said, I just won't go on Reddit. Ridiculous, right? So anyway, this lovely listener, Mikey, who's from London and He's a he, by the way. He tells me that he's an anthropologist. He writes me this lovely email, tells me that he's an anthropologist and that he's going to frame these criticisms 
away from being about me personally. And this is what he says. So these are his words, Mikey's words. They're funny, actually. American culture has been shaped since around the Civil War by certain ideologies and institutions. These include the disease model, linear bureaucracy, mass schooling, patriarchy, and punishment. So far, he's got a point, doesn't he? So he goes on. You, Tracy, do not promote the disease model. You show, your life shows, ADHD is not a curse. There is nothing wrong or terminal about it, that it actually can be positive and fun, that we can choose how we respond to it. So people will try to make you feel like there's something wrong with you. You don't act in a linear, bureaucratic way. You started a podcast independently. You free associate. You talk with feeling. You imply that people are responsible for their actions, that they should not do just what they are told to by the rules. You champion figures who've been disruptive and original outsiders. So people will call you annoying and privileged, which they do. He must have been on Reddit. I don't know. I didn't hear that part. Actually, I think I did. You are not part of mass schooling. You belong to no institution or academy. You call your listeners smart, trusting that we are intelligent, regardless of what what grades we got, because you know what being smart means in the real world. Mikey goes on. Yeah, this is the part. Okay, well, obviously, patriarchy. Women used to have to wear a scold's bridle for talking too much. Okay, Mikey. I've never heard of this. So I actually looked it up. Mikey's absolutely right. It was an iron muzzle that was enclosed in an iron frame, kind of like a mask, right? That surrounded the head of an accused woman. The main intention of this bridle, this is so sick, was to physically prevent the person, again, primarily women, from talking by the use of a bridle bit which was put in the woman's mouth like a horse, right? And then it was oppressed upon their tongue. And in some cases, a spike was attached to the bridal bit. So if you attempted to talk, it would cause wounds. Oh my gosh. Mikey, that was an image that I never needed to have. Anyway, Mikey goes on to say, Karen has rapidly spread as a term to incorporate any female who is older than about 28. A woman who is happy in life must be reminded of their privilege and taken down a peg or two. Yes, they will attack you using all the old weapons of misogyny. These criticisms, they're supposed to make you question yourself. Really, they want you to stop what you're doing, to conform and become quiet and obedient. I listen to your podcast. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I listen to your podcast because you are annoying and talk too much. I listen because you model for me that my tendency to be annoying is what makes me successful. When I get in my head, feel ashamed, start to overthink, things fall apart. By the way, all the names that you list, like Mozart, Whoopi Goldberg, Simone Biles, too, ADHD people, they are also very annoying. All the best from London, Mikey. P.S. Sorry, I listen to your podcast and I'm a guy. So when I read Mikey's email, I literally burst out laughing. I mean, what a lovely human. You know, he took the time to write. He took the time to tell me that as an ADHD male, he could relate and he struggled with the same things that I struggle with, that we struggle with. So thank you again, Mikey, for making my day. Thank you for making me laugh. I just love people who are also ADHD, don't you? So I thought this was the perfect story to kind of guide us into a little more of a discussion around rumination. And so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to share some unusual, some of you might think a little crazy, ways to break rumination that I'd never heard about, but I have recently discovered. Now, I don't know if they're going to work for you. What harm is there in trying, right? I decided to do this because over the last six months or so, I think I've mentioned this, I've been going through an ADCA program. ADCA is the ADD Coaching Academy, excellent program, and I get nothing for raving about them all the time. I just think it's a great program. 
And we need more people, right, who know about ADHD and can help to coach those who are struggling. So anyway, I'm going through this program through ADCA on coaching kids and teens with ADHD. And it's called their family program. And it too is really excellent. And the participants are all ADHD coaches and therapists from around the world. And I can't remember how we got on the subject of breaking that chatter in our heads when we hyper-focus or ruminate on ideas that just don't serve us. But we did. We got on that subject. And there were so many fantastic ideas, I think in part because it's an international group. And so I thought this would be such a great podcast topic, right? And I thought it would be helpful if I shared some of these options beyond the mindfulness, the meditation, and you know, my personal favorite, tapping with you. So the whole point of all of these options is to help you tune into your body, get out of your head, and calm down your nervous system. System. So I have seven of them, okay? So the first one we're going to start with, I call spiky balls. Now, (laughs) I've seen two types of these spiky balls. I've seen the rubber kind that were developed in Denmark as a tool to help patients manage depression. And these spiky balls are used on the pressure points of the feet. Studies show that foot massages reduce anxiety and depression. The study I was just looking at involved older female adults. And foot massages are shown to also reduce pain, improve circulation, and lower blood pressure. There are different sizes of these balls with soft to firm spikes. And as I said, they're either like rubber balls, like the one that I was just talking about, where you're basically rolling the spiky ball underneath your feet. Again, this is a way to get out of your head and tune into your body. When you've got these little spikes, you know, on your feet, you kind of forget about what's in your head because you're so focused on how they feel on the bottom of your feet. I've also seen acupressure needle balls where the spikes are even spikier. And these are metal and they have these metal needles on them. And you can use both of these on your hands, your arms, your legs, or your feet. So when I say both of these, either the acupressure needle balls or the spiky more rubber balls, right? Okay. So that's number one, our spiky balls. Number two, and I'm going to have links to everything that I'm talking about in the show notes, like where I bought them, (laughs) et cetera, et cetera. I think most of the stuff I just found on Amazon. Obviously, if there's an independent retailer, I'd rather shop with them. But because I know this is an international audience, I just felt like Amazon is probably the easiest place to go, and then you can figure out where you want to go from there. Number two, this is kind of a weird one, ice. I know, it's a little crazy, but you can see how it would stop your thoughts in its tracks, right? You've heard of cryotherapy spas? I had a friend, actually, I still have her. I adore her, Sandra. Sandra, hi, Sandra, if you're listening. And I remember a couple of years ago, she went into one of these cryotherapy spa booths, right? So it was this freezing booth where the temperatures are below zero, sub-zero, and you want to stay in there, I think, for as long as you can stand it. And apparently, if you do this longer than a few minutes, you can die. So we're not talking about a long time. And Sandra actually videotaped herself going into this cryotherapy spa booth. It was very funny. So... There are some studies that show evidence that there are actually health benefits from these cryotherapy spa booths. And one of the studies that I read talked about the fact that this cryotherapy, you know, treatment actually helped anxiety and depression. So this is a version of cryotherapy, kind of cryotherapy light, right? That is cheap and quick and gets you back into your body and out of your head. So what are you going to do? Okay. So let's say you're hyper-focusing on something you don't want to be wasting time on, right? You're ruminating, you're feeling worse and worse, and you can't seem to get out of your head. So what do you do? Let's assume you're at home. You get a large bowl, you fill it with ice and then water, and then you literally dunk your face in the bowl. So what does it do? It shocks you right back into your body. It gets you out of your head. It calms your nervous system. And I've been told by ADHD women that this for them has stopped 
panic attacks in their tracks. So it is something that I have seen people use for anxiety. Okay. Number three, one of the ADHD coaches from the Netherlands recommended this. So if you're struggling with constantly being in your head and you're ruminating on that, which of course is very unhelpful, what you do is you put a thick rubber band around your wrist and you leave it there. And whenever that ruminating thought starts, you're going to pull the rubber band and snap it on your wrist. This is going to snap you back, or the thought is that this is going to snap you back from that ruminating thought, again, get you back into your body and in the present moment. So you're no longer in the past or worried about the future, right? You're snapping that rubber band, getting yourself back into the present moment. And to use my friend therapist Perry Jansen's words, I believe that feelings are neutral. They're not good or bad. They're just information. So I wouldn't use this as a way to stop the feelings because, you know, we want to feel the feelings, but this is more a way to become aware of how often you're ruminating and worried about the past or the future instead of living in the present. Okay, number four is grounding. So when we were stuck in COVID, My daughter was home from college and we would work all day because there was nothing else to do, right? And then we would watch trash in the middle of the night. This is embarrassing and a total waste of life, but I'm being honest with you here. I think I wrote an article for Attitude Magazine and I talked about Love Island and how all of a sudden it, it just became this cycle where it was three in the morning and I was up watching Love Island total crap, right? So Love Island was a favorite. And then there was the Housewives, I think it was of the OC. But I got to tell you, even with trash, you can learn something. And I can't remember who, but one of the women on the show, she had a panic attack. And one of the other women, who I can't remember who that was either, helped her calm her nervous system with a technique called grounding. And it made so much sense, but I'd never seen it before. So I looked it up. So again, The goal here is you want to get yourself back in your body. So you want to start by slowly breathing. You want deep, long breaths. And once you can comfortably breathe, you start by, number one, finding five things that you can see. So you look around the room, wherever you are, and you identify them out loud. So right now, I see orchids. I see pillows. I see a throw. I see my phone. I see my computer. Okay. Then you look for four things that you can touch and you touch them and you name them. Okay. I'm touching my hair. I'm touching my blotter. I'm touching my pencil. I'm touching my breathe um, thing that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. (laughs) Then number three, you look for three things that you can hear outside of your body. Okay. I can hear the birds singing. I can hear kids playing. I can hear the sound of water. Then you're going to identify number four, two things that you can smell. I can smell the candle that is burning. I can smell soap. I can smell a cleaning product. I can smell the flowers that are on my desk. And then number five, you name one thing that you can taste. I can taste the coffee that I just drank. I can taste a little bit of garlic from my lunch. Gross, huh? So that is a technique called grounding. And again, the whole point of it is that you want to get yourself grounded in the present. You want to get yourself out of your head. And you can imagine by the time you go through all of these five senses, basically, right? You're talking about what you see, what you touch, what you hear, what you smell, and what you taste. So it's our five senses. By the time you go through all of those, you have to be grounded in the present, right? You pretty much have to be out of your head. It's probably impossible to do all those things while still remaining in your head. Okay, so what is number five? We've just finished grounding. This is a really odd one. Number five is really sour or spicy gum. Apparently, it gets you back into your body. And there is a German company that makes really sour gum for this specific reason. It's called Center Shock. 
And this was recommended by a coach from Germany, I believe. So the product is German. And I actually went on Amazon and I was able to find it. I don't know if it's still available. I went back again yesterday and I can't remember if it's in the links or not. But if it's available, I will post it. And by the way, what I discovered as I was researching gums that, you know, are super sour or super spicy is there are cognitive advantages to also chewing gum. And I'm going to post the study in the show notes, but apparently cognitive function and overall test performance are significantly improved when chewing gum. And they think it's because it increases your heart rate and blood flow. So guess what happens? There's more oxygen to the brain. And apparently the oxygen to the brain was increased by as much as 25 to 40% just by chewing gum. Now, it also reduces anxiety and stress. Chewing gum is a lot like those repetitive body-focused behaviors that we engage in to calm our nervous systems. Things like biting our nails or our cuticles, pulling our hair, tapping our leg. I am also going to post a 2011 study that showed that if you chew gum twice a day for two weeks, it reduces anxiety significantly by reducing cortisol. Remember that stress hormone? Now, I got to tell you, when I chew gum, I often bite myself. And so I'm almost kind of anxious when I'm chewing gum because I'm just waiting for, you know, the next time I'm going to bite myself. But for most people, that is not the case. For most people, it reduces stress. Chewing gum apparently also increases alertness. They think that it's because you're constantly moving your jaw, which again increases your brain activity. So again, you're increasing your blood flow, right? And that increases the oxygen that goes to your brain. And yeah, so chewing gum, regular chewing gum seems to work, but really sour or spicy gum is the gum like that center shock gum that you just want to kind of, you know, shock your system back into your bot. Well, you want to shock your nervous system, give it a jolt is what I mean. And you want to get back into your body and out of your head. Okay. What is number six? Number six is called Hakalawa, and it's a meditation. Now, I know nothing about it other than it originates from the practices of the ancient Hawaiian shamans. I know it sounds so weird, but I want you to try it because it totally works. And it is a form of meditation, but it's so much easier for me to sit still through this than a normal meditation. And I don't know why that is. I think because it's more intense. And so I'm kind of like, oh, what am I trying to say? I'm totally checked in, right? Okay, so this is what you're going to do. And I'm going to repeat this more than once. And please don't do this if you're driving, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to look straight ahead and you're going to pick an eye level spot on the wall to look at. As you stare at this spot, Just let your mind go and focus all your attention on the spot. You know, what I always use is a doorknob, and I've got a doorknob literally sitting right in front of my desk that I'm looking at, okay? So you're picking an eye-level spot, right? And you're staring at that spot so intensely that you're just letting your mind go. You're focusing all your attention on that spot on that doorknob for me. I'm doing this while I'm talking about it. So what I want you to notice is as you're staring, you're still staring at it, right? As you're staring at that spot or doorknob, do you notice how your vision starts to spread out and it becomes more peripheral? So it started in the center, but now it's going to the side. So it's kind of like a horse, right? So you're intensely focused on the spot or the doorknob, so much so that you're no longer seeing the center of the spot or the doorknob, and it's starting to go out to the side, and you're able to see more of your peripheral vision. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to the peripheral, right? In fact, pay more attention to the peripheral than to the central part of your vision. It's hard, right? I mean, you really have to be focused on what you're doing and there's kind of, there's an intensity around it, right? So what you want to do is you want to stay in this state using that peripheral vision for as long as you can. But the key is you have to keep breathing. You know, it's really easy because it is kind of intense that you stop breathing, but no, you need to keep breathing while you're focused on 
the spot that has now moved over to the side and into your peripheral vision. Okay. So what do you notice when you're doing that? Well, probably that you can't think about anything but keeping your vision in that periphery, right? So you're not in your head. You have to be in your body. And this isn't like a regular meditation where I'm constantly reminding myself, go back to the spot, go back to the spot, go back to the doorknob, go, you know? That I really struggle with, which frankly is why I like tapping more as a form of meditation than regular meditation. But this, this, wait, what's it called again? Hala, uh, hold on. Um, Hakalawa, <laughs> that I can actually do. Now, I can't do it for long periods of time, but what I like about it is if there's something going on in my head and I just want to stop it, I can be anywhere and I can pretty much do this, right? Versus if I want to do tapping, you know, I usually want to take my tapping app out and I look kind of foolish sitting there tapping the top of my head and under my arms like a monkey. So, I really like this form of meditation, Hakalawa, and I want you to try it, and I want you to let me know what you think, okay? So, I hope that you feel calmer, I hope that you feel more grounded, and I hope that you feel like you are more in the present, because it's really hard to focus on all that ruminating, all that stuff that's going on in your head when you're really trying to keep your intent on focusing on that peripheral vision. Okay, so what is number seven? Okay, this one is, is kind of weird. So one of the coaches, I think it might have been the same coaches, or the same coach from Germany, mentioned that I think it was in Denmark, they use ammonia to snap people out of their head and get them into their body. And there's no way that I was going to try that. That just seemed dangerous. <laughs> but it got me thinking, and so I started Googling. And... This is what I found. Do you remember smelling salts in Victorian times? Remember, it was for women and they'd wear their corsets too tight. And so they'd pass out. And some gentlemen would, you know, always come save the day with smelling salts. But you never really knew, well, what were smelling salts and who walked around with smelling salts? Well, apparently people still use them today and they are made from ammonia, water and alcohol. But get this, this is funny, actually. It's no longer fainting women who are using them, but athletes, athletes like bodybuilders to increase alertness or focus. And these smelling salts, what they do is they release ammonia gas, which irritates your nose and lungs when you sniff them. And this is what allows oxygen to flow rapidly to your brain. And at least in the case of some bodybuilders, they claim it makes them capable of lifting much more weight. So of course I thought I would try it, right? Even though I said, no, I'm not doing that ammonia thing. That sounds scary. This had ammonia, but I went and I ordered it. So I bought something called athletic smelling salts and it's in a very small bottle, kind of like what you would see Visine in. And it has a tip and a screw top. So what you do is you unscrew the top and then you squeeze the bottle and Oh my gosh, it is totally ridiculous. I tried it a couple times, and for whatever reason, I was not able to get it far away enough. It is terrifying. It literally burns the inside of your nose, your throat. My eyes were watering. It is so unpleasant, and I'm sure it increases your focus because it's so terrifying, but it just, I'm sorry, it just does not seem safe. Granted, it definitely gets you right out of your head, and I think that, I don't know, I must just be super sensitive because I went on and I looked at all the reviews and 90% of the negative reviews were because it was too weak. <laughs> that was the primary complaint. It wasn't strong enough, but for me, it was literal torture. You know, and I kept thinking I'm doing it wrong. So I got to try again. And by the third time I was like, I'm not doing this again. This is not good for me, right? I am the expert on me. And this is so incredibly unpleasant, so unpleasant that I'm not even going to post the link in the show notes. But because of that scary athletic smelling salts, I found another product that I actually like a lot and it really does work for me. And it is a product called Breathe. So breathe is non-toxic, 
It's from plants and it's in this little tiny tube. You know, it's kind of probably the tube is big enough so that you can kind of, you don't fit it in your nose, but you put it right up to your nose. And it's basically made with Himalayan salt and then essential oils like eucalyptus, peppermint, rosemary, tea tree oil, lavender. And I really like this. It's not nearly as strong. It doesn't smell toxic. But when I smell it, I feel it not only in my nose, but also my throat. It gives me a little jolt and it probably does help with focus because there are studies that show that rosemary essential oils does help with focus. So when I'm feeling a little sluggish or foggy, it literally clears my sinuses and my head. Now, I'm smelling it again. I love it, actually. So there you go with our seven unusual ways to stop the rumination in its tracks. Now, it should go without saying that whatever you're going to do, I mean, I'm a lawyer. I got to tell you this, right? Always check with your doctor or therapist first. But you might want to try some of these ideas. You know, what I would do is I would try the options that interest you. And then if they work for you, maybe consider creating a stop the rumination toolkit, right? Maybe you have a basket with a spiky ball or a few thick rubber bands, a list that you laminate with the grounding instructions on it. Maybe one of these breathe tubes that I'm now holding onto or some really sour gum. So the next time you're in your head and you're struggling to get out, you actually have a plan to follow. I mean, you could have one toolkit in your car. You could have another for your office and a third for home, right? So. These are some unusual ideas that I was able to pull up to stop ruminating. Let me know what works for you. Thank you for letting me share them with you. And that is what I have for you for today. Now, before I leave, I want to remind you my patented program, Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, is open for enrollment starting... I think it's next week, right? Is that what I said? Starting next week. And we'll be beginning our AOK program on the 19th. And you can find more information at tracyoutsuka.com forward slash AOK. Our goal, as always, my goal, as always, is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too may discover their amazing strengths. And you know what? Your reviews really help in that regard. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Outsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, it's also the name of our free Facebook group. We're a totally smart-ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. Join us at tracyotsuka.com, where you can also find more information on our Your ADHD Brain is A-OK system. I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.